Okay, so I'm going to start this recording right here because I remember looking at this yesterday and thinking that it looked weird. Um, and then I looked at my notes and I noticed something. So if this were the problem, this is the correct answer. However, this is not what the problem was supposed to look like. So I am going to erase this here and show you guys what this problem was supposed to look like. There was supposed to be an X right here. So when I copied this over, for some reason, the X did not copy over, but that changes a lot about this. So what we had already established was that we have this one over E to the 132, which means that this was a negative exponent that brought this down to the denominator. So we're gonna rewrite this with positive exponents. So we're gonna have E to the X squared, E to the 23 X, and then this is gonna be times e to the negative 132. Then we're going to use our rule of exponents where if we have the same base, we can combine using addition. So this is just gonna become 23x plus a negative 132. So I can just put minus 132. Now I cannot actually add those together. So in the previous problem I did because the x was not present. So now this is what we have for our problem. We will cross out the same bases, and we're gonna have this problem here. X squared equals 23X minus 132. So now this is a quadratic. So I'm gonna take the 23X, subtract it, and I'm gonna add the 132 over, so I can set this equal to zero. So this is gonna become X squared minus 23X plus 132, equals zero. Then I'm going to go through and solve this. So I can factor to solve here and let's see here, multiplies to 132 and combines to negative 23. I believe that is 12 and 11. So let's just take a look here. Yeah, so we're going to have both of them negative here. So x minus 12, x minus 11. Negative 12 times negative 11, 132. Negative 12 minus 11, negative 23. Then I'm gonna take both of these and set them equal to zero. And then my answers are going to be a lot nicer here. Here I'm going to add 12. I'm gonna get x equals 12. Here I'm gonna add the 11, get x equals 11. So I get two solutions here, x equals 12, and 11, so that's a lot neater there. So sorry about that X not appearing there. Um, not sure why that copied over weird. Well, let's take a look at some real world problems where we are using exponents. So we have compound interest. Compound interest is interest that is compounded off of the amount that is currently in the account, which includes all deposits plus any interest that has been accrued. So you're actually earning interest off of interest. That is what compound interest is doing. This is your formula for what we call periodic interest. Okay, so periodic interest is going to be periods of n times per year. So that could be yearly, it could be twice a year, it could be um, quarterly, which would be four times a year. Monthly is gonna be your most common one. Um, you could also have weekly or daily, how many times that interest is being compounded, just how many times it's being calculated here. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so here's our formula. You're going to have the amount in the account equals the principal, and this is going to be times 1 plus R, that's the interest rate as a decimal, over N, so how many times it's compounding, and then that's raised to the N again how many times it's compounded, and then t is the time in years. So for example, you have suppose $1,000 is invested at an annual rate of 4% compounded quarterly. Find the total amount in the account after 10 years, and this is if no withdrawals are made. So here you have a principal of $1,000. You have a rate of 4%, which as a decimal is gonna be 0.04. You are compounding quarterly, that is four times a year, four quarters, four times a year, and the total amount, 10 years, so your time is going to be 10. So we're going to plug all of that into our formula. 
So we've got A equals our principal, 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 4 to the 4 times 10. And then the biggest thing here is that we are just following order of operations. So if I'm looking here inside my parentheses first, I'm going to do this 0 0.04 divided by 4. Then I'm going to add that to 1. Okay, so that's going to give me 1,000 times 1.01 .01 to the 4 times 10, 40. The biggest mistake that I see is that students will go left to right here. But remember that exponents come before multiplication in order of operations. Okay, so you're going to go here, 1.01. .01. You're going to raise that to the 40th. Then you're going to multiply by 1,000. Okay, so the multiplication is last here. So that amount is going to be $1,488.86. Okay, so we started with $1,000, did not put any other money in there, left it there for 10 years. So we earned $488.86 in interest. The other type of interest that we have is continuous, which is compounded at any given time and it has a special formula here it looks like it says pert okay so you have a principal e is this button in your calculator which if you look just right here to the left of four in the yellow e to the x there exponential um, e equation here your rate and your time so you have here five thousand dollars it's going to be your p is deposited in an account paying 3%, so that's your rate, 0 0.03. Compounded continuously, so that's just telling you that you're using this formula, and your time is five years. So if we plug this into this formula here, you're going to have 5,000, and then you have e to the, let's see, 0 0.03 times 5. And you can go ahead and put this in your calculator just like that if you'd like. So you have 5,000 to get your E second LN to give you that E. Then you have 0 0.03 times 5. Close the parentheses. That will give you $5,809.17. Okay. So let's go ahead and you guys can pause this video and work some of these practice problems. And when you're ready, just press play again. Okay, so I am going to solve this problem here. So what I want to do is I want to bring this all so we don't have any fractions. I'm going to bring this up here, which means that's going to be an e to the negative 3, which is how it got down there in the first place. Bring the rest of the problem down. Okay, then I use my rules of exponents. So when I have the same base, I can combine them into the same base using addition in my exponents. And that's too many symbols for me, so I'm just going to write minus 3 here. All right, and then bring down the e to the x squared. Cross out your bases. And you have x squared equals 4x minus 3. Bring everything to one side. So I'm going to subtract 4x and add 3. So that's going to give me an x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And then let's see, we could factor this. Looks like I'm going to do an x minus 3, x minus 1. Negative 3 times negative 1, positive 3 negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. Set them both equal to 0. I get x minus 3 equals 0. That's going to give me a positive 3. x minus 1 equals 0 will give me a positive 1. And then you can go ahead and you have 3 and 1. You can check these if you'd like. You can just put this into your calculator like so. So here you have second e to the Let's see, 3 squared, that would be 9. Just look at what that is, okay? Then you're going to do, let's see, E. Excuse me? 
e to the 4 times 3, so that would be what? e to the 12th times e to the, we'll go down here to this line here, negative 3. Eh, same number. So if you get the same number, then you know it works. So same thing, e to the 1 squared, so that's e to the 1st. And then e to the, let's see, 4 times 1 would be 4, times e to the negative 3. And that'll give you the same thing here. So that's how you check them. All right, next problem, you have 21 and 441. So I look at 21 and I think, okay, there's no roots in 21. So factors are just 1, 21, 3, and 7. So I say, well, maybe 21 squared is 441. So maybe 21 is a root of 441, and it is. So I'm going to bring down the 21, x cubed, and I'm going to rewrite the 441 as 21 squared, and then bring down the x. Okay, so when you're looking at your two numbers, look at the smaller number, see if you can find a root. If you can't, then see if it's a root of the larger number. Then we can cross out the bases. And here you just have x cubed equals 2x, which means, let's see here, when I solve this, I'm going to have to set it equal to 0. So we'll subtract the 2x. And I can factor out an x, get x squared minus 2. And then I take each of my factors and set them equal to 0. So let's see, I've got an x equals 0. And I have an x squared minus 2 equals 0. So let's see, if I add a 2 to both sides, I'm going to get x squared equals 2. Take the square root plus or minus square root of 2. So I've got three solutions here. I've got 0 and then plus or minus, oops, not 2, square root of 2, square root of 2. And you can go ahead and you can check that if you'd like. You take a look here. You've got 21, let's see here, time or to the, let's see, how would we put this in? X cubed. So if you wanted to check, let's just check the positive square root. So we would go parentheses, square root of two, and then we're gonna cube that. See what number that gives us. And then 441 to the, square root of 2. That's the same number, so it works. Okay, so if you check that, you get the same number, and then it works. And let's take a look at number 3. So you have 16 and 256. So if I think of roots of 16, I have 4 is a root of 16. Um, 16 might actually be a root of 256, though. So let's try those. So 16 squared. Yeah, so you actually have two things you could do here. I think you could do 4 squared for the 16, and then let's see what root 4 is of 256. Maybe it is 2 to the 4th? Yeah. So you could do 4 squared and 4 to the 4th, or you could just do 16 squared. I would just do the 16 squared. That's probably the easier root here. So 256 is 16 squared. Bring down the x plus 3. You've got to bring the 16 up here, which means you got to put it as a negative exponent. So this is going to be 16 to the negative 1x. That's what would have, if I had it like this, that's what took it and made it 1 over 16 to the x. Okay, now you have the same root. Cross out the bases. You have negative 1x equals 2 to the x plus 3. And let's see here, this is going to distribute. We're going to have 2x plus 6. I'm going to take this 2, I'm going to subtract it from both sides. That's going to give me a negative 3x equals 6. Divide by negative 3. I'm going to get x equals negative 2. So our solution there is negative 2. And that should be the end of 5.3.